We are here live at Morriston Hospital. We're in the Welsh Centre for Burns and Plastics Surgery, uh, where they are celebrating a very special anniversary, 25 years since they opened. And over our coverage this evening, we'll be hearing and speaking to the family of a patient who had surgery here tonight under the, this roof. She had surgery here today. We'll also hear from patients who credit surgeons uh, with the work they've done to save their lives. And we'll be finding out more about future technologies and research. But first, let's take a look at what makes this place just so special. The Welsh Centre for Burns and Plastic Surgery opened in 1994 and ever since has been at the forefront of burns and plastic treatment. Having expanded through the decades today, the centre treats around 750 burns cases a year and more than 6,000 plastic surgery patients, half of which are children. Treatments range from surgery for cancers and burns to limb reconstruction. And with many patients needing therapy to recover from the impacts of their injuries, specially trained staff are on hand to provide support for both their physical and mental health. This combination of highly skilled staff and groundbreaking treatment means the centre has gained a reputation as one of the largest and busiest burns and plastic services in Europe. Now for something quite special. Earlier this morning, about 7.30 in the morning, a patient, Catherine Wilson, who is just 19 months old, came in to have surgery. She was born with her fingers fused together, so doctors and surgeons have been working to separate them. And our cameras were given very special access to follow that surgery today. And Mike Griffiths was there with her parents as she underwent that surgery. Morning, Mr. Wilson. Hi. Natalie and Jonathan trust this man deeply. Consultant plastic surgeon Dean Boyce has already operated on their daughter Catherine. Today, he'll carry out a further operation. So this is Catherine's third procedure um, to release her syndactyly, so she was born with her fingers joined together. Um, the little finger and the little finger on both hands. Um, so we've had two other procedures and this is the last one now to separate the fingers on her right hand. She's you know, managed to feed herself, she likes holding her spoon to feed herself and everything. Um, but it's just the bits, you know, like crawling and everything else, so, you know, and she's starting to notice the difference now in her hands that, you know, her left hand has been separated, so the fingers are four fingers on her left hand, but not on her right hand. So it's just the little things that she's noticing. The operation itself is done under general anaesthetic. The team take every care to make sure Catherine's looked after. This is an extremely delicate procedure, especially on a patient so small. But the team here do this kind of work day in, day out, and they know it will make a big difference to her life. And that's something Catherine's father, Jonathan, knows very well. It's very good. We've, we've, had, we've had excellent care here from, from all of the staff. And something I experienced a long time ago um, when the unit was based up at St Lawrence in Chapstow, because I had the same procedure done on my hands. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's good for me to see actually how it's developed and uh, how their skills have improved even more now. Every person in this team has an important role, carefully and confidently performing the operation. Basically, we, we just have to separate the digits, uh, which probably sounds easier than it is, because uh, there's lots of small nerves and blood vessels going to the digits. And also, these digits were, were joined at the end by bone. So in this case, we managed to do it without skin grafts. Uh, which is better cosmetically and also um, functionally in the long term. It is a great job to be able to do because you do make a difference. Within two hours, the operation is complete. The team hope Catherine will be healed within weeks, ready to live as full a life as she can. Mike Griffiths, ITV News. <clears throat> well, we'll be seeing how Catherine got on in that surgery later in the programme. But first, let's have a chat with the clinical lead here who we saw in Mike's report, Dean Boyce. Hi. Thanks for joining us on Wales at Six. Yeah. And you were involved in today's surgery. How did it go? Oh, it went as planned, yeah. Very pleased. And, and are they sort of the routine um, surgeries that you carry out? Personally, yeah. Obviously, there's a lot of different types of um, surgery performed in the unit. But, uh, yeah, I do a lot of kids' hands, so I do that on a routine basis. And what are the most common injuries that people come in here with, with regard to burns and, and plastics? Yeah, well, people often associate with plastic with burns, and, and indeed uh, my burns colleagues see burns 
from uh, all over the southwest of England and South Wales. Um, so the commonest burns are things like scalds and flame burns and then more severe burns such as house fires. Um, we also see a lot of trauma, um, particularly hand trauma, uh, things like nerve injuries, tendon injuries and fractures and we cover uh, a lot of South Wales for that also. And what does it mean to you to be part of that patient's journey and to really be saving their lives or transforming their lives for the better? Uh, well, obviously, obviously very good, but uh, part of a very big team. Um, part of what makes our unit very special is, is, is the, the quality of people involved, from clerks to, to uh, nursing staff, to photography, to secretaries uh, and to clinicians. Yeah, it's absolutely remarkable the work that you do and, and you must create a real bond with those patients Well, certainly they credit you with saving their lives. Yeah, it is You're very fortunate, particularly with, with treating children. You often follow them up into adulthood and with the more major injuries, obviously they involve a number of different procedures so you become quite close to the patients. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Dean Boyce. And I can tell you there is a very special bond between the patients and the staff here. In fact, there is a board filled with thank you notes down the hallway um, which uh, credit uh, the staff with, with literally saving lives and changing their lives and one of those patients is an artist from Cardiff. His name is Kevin Strong. He did work as a telecoms engineer when a serious accident almost took his life. Our reporter Hamish Ouskery went to meet him and just a warning there are some graphic images in his report. You only need to silhouette those people. It could be a couple with a dog, it could be three children playing. Kevin has always had a passion for art, but he learned to draw and paint using his right hand. And that was all but taken away from him in a horrific accident in 2014. I was working in a cherry picker, 35 foot up in the air. I came into contact with 11,000 volts. The electricity arced across, hit the back of my neck, travelled down my shoulder blade, uh, luckily for me, down my arm, uh, to find the shortest uh, path to earth. Uh, had it gone through my body, um, I would have died instantly because of the surge of power. These images were taken after the first few surgeries to Kevin's arm. There are others taken soon after the accident, but they're too graphic to show. Kevin's initial relief, simply to be alive, did not last long. I used my teeth a lot. <laughs> the hardest thing uh, for me was being told in hospital I'd never use my right hand again. Being told I wouldn't be able to do painting again, it was quite a blow to deal with. But Kevin didn't give up on painting for good. Um, so first of all, it was learning to write left-handed. This is probably the first left-handed sketch, and I think I shocked myself because I realised then that, you know, it wasn't all doom and gloom. There was light at the end of the tunnel. Kevin's had nearly 35 surgeries in total. In one of them, his arm was stitched to his groin to provide blood flow for a skin graft. Together, despite having lost 70% movement, Kevin's grateful to have a right arm at all. The, the, the chap uh, that had me in on the day of the accident, uh, Tom Potica, Brilliant, he saved my life. His team, him and his team, they worked endlessly all through the night. This is a masterpiece. Uh, you know, Dean Boyce, the plastic surgeon at Modestin, what he's done with my arm. It's amazing how he can see, you know, have the insight to sort of reconstruct the arm. Um, it, it's, it's, it's brilliant. Uh, Daisies, what we do is something. You just gotta grab life to the full because it's, it's too short. There's so many things you want to do. <clears throat> and having that second chance puts a different perspective on it and it makes you realise, you know, what can be achieved and what you've got to achieve. So, uh, yeah, I'm just grateful to everyone at Modestin, you know. Well, as you saw earlier, it's not just adults they treat here, it's also children. I've come over to the children's ward where they specialise in treating children from birth to the age of 18. And it's not just the work they do here on the ward that is so special. They also do work outside of the ward. They've created a club. It's called the Welsh Dragons Burns Club. And it's for children who have these injuries to come along, build up friendships and build up their confidence. And earlier this week, I met one of the girls who says this club means everything to her. 
Five years ago, Chloe experienced burns that changed her life forever. I was 10. It was three months after my birthday. And my mother asked me to go and get a lighter. And I like, started playing with it. And then my top caught on fire and I screamed for my mother. The top she was wearing melted into her skin. For her mum, instincts kicked in. Well, her top was just up in flames going into her hair. The first thing I done was grab her on the stairs and throw her back up in the bathroom. The OT here said I'd done the right thing, I saved her life. Chloe's body was covered in 21% burns and doctors say she had a 30% chance of survival. The physical recovery has been tough with numerous surgeries, skin grafts, laser and physiotherapy. But the mental recovery is tough too. Been on a fair few trips over the years, haven't we? That's where the Dragon's Burns Club has helped. His body bowing down in Mova. Oh, Legoland, that was one of your favourite trips. The main aim of the club really is to support children, to give them a place where they can feel comfortable, to introduce them to other children who have similar experiences, and for them to form a group of friends and their own network of friends. Our philosophy always is you have to love yourself before anybody else will love you. If they help me socialise, make friends, with my confidence and the friends who make, they're for a lifetime. That's Alton Towers' luck. It is a club no one wants to join, but through shared experience, it's building confidence and teaching children like Chloe to love their scars and themselves. You have to think to yourself, like, why me and stuff like that? But then, like, you got to realise, if it happened to you, you're alive. Just take every day as it comes and make the most of it. Some wise words from Chloe there and another glimpse of all the thank you letters here on the Children's Ward. Now, in order to provide the best treatment possible, a great deal of research goes into the latest medical technologies. And we've come into this room to meet Peter Llewellyn Evans, who is a reconstructive scientist here in the centre. So, Peter, just explain a bit about what your job is and what you do. So I head up the Maxillofacial Laboratory, uh, which is a sort of talented team of technicians, scientists and engineers. And we support the, the Burns unit uh, and the Burns Plastics unit by creating, one of the roles is to create uh, customs Burns masks. So. And we saw a bit of sort of how that works earlier. We sent someone up to sort of show how that technology works. Just talk us through it. Yeah, so a um, person who undergoes facial burns, maybe, uh, or even acid burns, uh, will require a, a custom mask. Uh, and that will reduce the amount of scarring. By They wear this uh, uh, every day for up to a year. Up to a year? Uh, yeah, so it's a, lo a long time. And, uh, and over that period, we'll make several masks as the scarring goes down as the face changes. Oh, it's quite incredible. How do patients react to this? It is, it is pioneering, isn't it? Yes, I mean, the, uh, the original way of, of, of getting a model to create the mask would have been to have uh, like a chewing gum uh, type material on your face, backed with plaster. It's quite unpleasant. And for children, Sounds painful. You, yeah, it's not very pleasant. And, and for children, you've got to do that under general anaesthetic. But here we've got a 3D camera in the medical photography department. And what we can do is take an, a, an image of the patient, and that gives us the data to take into our software, we can smooth off the scarring and then uh, overnight we can print a, a 3D model of the face. That's so, quite incredible. Uh, I know you specialise in this but there's lots more work going on here in the centre. Can you give us a taste of the sort of research and technology that you're working on? Yes, I mean the digital technology has enabled us to do facial prosthetics, to do uh, custom implants for patients, uh, for chest implants. So there's a wide variety of, of things we can do with the digital technology and a lot of that we've pioneered here in Wales. Oh, it's absolutely amazing um, and, and you're doing incredible work. What, what, what can we see next, do you think? I think for us really is to have a centre here in Morriston. We, we've, we've pioneered this work in, in maxillofacial and burns and plastics, but we'd really like to have a, a 3D printing and 3D design centre within the hospital so that surgeons and, and medical staff can access that from all areas of the hospital and really improve patient care. Okay, brilliant. Peter Llewellyn Evans, thanks very much Thank for joining us. Us. And talking of pioneering work, there is a lot going on in this centre. In fact, one member of staff has become the first breast reconstruction nurse specialist in Wales. Her name is Julia Warwick and she currently has around 300 patients under her care across Wales. Kira Cohen-Ennis has been to meet her and one of her patients. 
Catherine and her daughter Amber have been making the journey from Llandovery to Morriston for the past few years. In 2014, Catherine began to have redness and pain in her left breast. After a visit to her doctor, she was diagnosed with breast cancer and within a month started chemotherapy. I had a full mastectomy and then later radiotherapy and I was um, clear by the end of 2014, cancer free. So that was very lucky. Catherine said she lost confidence after the mastectomy and made the decision to have breast reconstruction surgery. I just want to look normal. I don't want to be um, constantly writing myself and pulling my top down and adjusting my bra. It's not good for your confidence at all. But staff at Morrison Hospital have been helping Catherine feel like herself again. She's especially grateful to nurse Julia Warwick. I met her before the operation and then when I came round from my operation, Julia was the first person there sort of looked after me, she reassured me, she dealt with my meltdowns. When I went home, she called me every day just to check I was OK. I don't think I could have done it without Julia and all the staff at the unit. Hi, Catherine. Hi. How are you? Come on, I'm well? good. Yeah, lovely good. to see lovely you. Lovely to see you too. Hi, Amber. So Catherine's a very, very nice lady, very special lady. I thought these ladies are have been through a particularly difficult experience with her um, cancer but has survived her cancer and obviously opted for reconstruction. We spent a lot of time together, um, sort of helping her to, to cope through those traumatic times. Julia's worked at the Burns and Plastics Centre since it opened 25 years ago. And in 2017, she became the first specialist breast reconstruction nurse in Wales. And how have you been coping at home? We've seen lots of new and old faces come along, lots of changes. There's a team, a support network within in the plastics unit of nurses that this role wouldn't be possible without them. Well, as well as the physical effects of an injury, there are quite often with that mental effects too. It is quite hard to imagine what it would be like to look in the mirror after suffering those life-changing uh, events in your life. Um, but the, the staff here are here to uh, especially trained to deal with that. Uh, and one of the first places patients will go into the outside world is the garden, which is here at the centre and Kelsey Redmore is out there for us tonight to find out more about the redevelopment of the garden. Kelsey. Yes, Alex. Well, I am right here in the courtyard for the Burns and Plastic Surgery Unit here. And this is a very important place for patients, as you mentioned, to come out into the real world after they've been here for quite some time. Now, this statue behind me is a steel statue. The steel was actually donated by Tata Steel after the chorus incident, the explosion back in 2001, after many of the Burns patients were actually treated here. Now, this whole garden is going under a huge refurbishment, and I'll come on to that in just a moment. But someone who can really help to talk about the ways in which places like this can really help patients is Claire Baker you're a senior matron here now for people who are here you know receiving treatment they must be here for a really long time and it must be a pretty daunting process to actually get back out and about into the real world what kind of things have you seen and how does it affect people we have we have patients here from a large area so we have patients from south, the southwest UK as well and their families and they stay sometimes in our Burns unit um, for months at a time and that can be very difficult for those patients in the families so for them to be able to come out when we are able to do that in a controlled environment so they're not with other patients looking or other people looking at them is very important and to come out to have some fresh air to smell fresh air to see flowers colors which is something that they don't see when they're in a four-walled ward um, is really important to them and as you said, it's nice to get out and have that fresh air. And a space like this is so vital for when you are rehabilitating people as well. And uh, you've received some funding, some people's project funding. And in fact, we do have some footage, a sketch actually, of what the garden will look like when it's refurbished. What kind of things are you looking forward to briefly? I think we're looking forward to be able to bring the patients out and for them to be able to rehabilitate themselves. So we're going to have some areas where they can perhaps look at doing a bit of gardening themselves, to be able to use their hands um, and to be able to sit in environments that's safe for them really. Brilliant. Well, Claire, thank you very much. The refurbishment will begin in September. Many things will actually help patients and their families here at the unit. Kelsey, thank you. Well, earlier in the programme, we met Catherine Wilson, who underwent surgery here today. And earlier, I caught up with her and her parents to find out how it went. 
So it's been a long day for you, but uh, she's holding it together, Catherine. How, how did it all go today? Um, it's gone really well today. So, um, yeah, she was in theatre just a little bit longer than we anticipated, but she hasn't had a skin graft um, as we kind of planned for. So, um, yeah, good. The outcome's good. And how long will she have to keep the uh, cast on for? So this cast will be on for two weeks, um, and we do back to David Ward for review in two weeks, and then um, a referral, outpatient referral then for uh, three months just as follow-ups to see how everything's healing. And John, what, what sort of difference is this going to make to her life? Uh, massive. So um, it's Catherine's third operation, so it's the final operation to separate the, the sort of two fingers on both hands. So it'll mean she's got much more ability now to develop with her fine motor skills and things. Because um, obviously she's at the age now where she's using, starting to use spoons and explore and things like that. So she'll have full dexterity now going forward, so it'll make a massive difference for her. And what have you made of the whole experience here at the centre? It's been great. We've had um, massive support from the staff. Um, you know, Mr. Bruce has been wonderful and has explained everything. Um, the anaesthetists, you know, we've our first appointment, I suppose, we were a little bit anxious as to what to expect. Um, but I suppose now being old hands and, you know, this is our third surgery um, and Catherine's third procedure, you know, as much as you're never really laid back, but, you know, we're a lot more... Um, settled about um, Catherine's procedures and how everything's gone. Yeah, and she's giving us a good wave here with the with this hand. Soon yeah. you'll be able to do it with both. Uh, yeah. yeah, Catherine, thank you so much for sharing this journey with us. You're and uh, good luck to Catherine for everything in the future. Thank you. And that is all from us from Morriston Hospital here this evening. We have heard some incredible stories about the staff and of course the patients too. Many congratulations on 25 years to all the staff here who make this place what it is. Thank you, good night. <laughs>